Ridley Scott took advantage of the technological advantages and special effects to, in a way, remake the epic Sandal and Swords movie that Kubrick and Anthony Mann had already made four decades earlier. More emotional and dramatic than Spartacus, less sophisticated and thoughtful than The Fall of the Roman Empire, Gladiator is spectacular and bloody. And boy, did all this pay off. Sometimes it makes the, blade the film consecrated Russell Crowe and Joaquin Phoenix as Hollywood stars, was the first great international success of the 21st century, and swept all the industry awards and the box office, reviving the genre and the public's interest in the Roman Empire and ancient Greece, which brought about films that tried to replicate this success, such as Troy, Alexander, King Arthur, 300, and the Rome series. So today we'll look at 20 interesting facts about Gladiator. Russell Crowe was not the first choice. The producers, as is often the case, wanted to play it safe. They looked for Mel Gibson, who had already had a big hit with Braveheart. But the actor, who was 44 at the time, was considered too old for the role and turned it down. Following that rejection, they went for Russell Crowe, who was 35 and had just finished making L.A. Confidential. Darts for the Tigers Tranquilizer darts were used for the five tigers that appear in the film. One of the most memorable scenes from the film is the fight between Maximus and the gladiator Tigris, which takes place in the arena of the Roman Colosseum with five tigers. The animals were real. How was the scene filmed, with the presence of a trainer and a veterinarian who carried tranquilizer darts? The film's script went further and included a rhinoceros, but the scene was removed due to production difficulties. I need mean, also a couple of good rhinos in there that'll function, real rhinos. But the big trick really is to do a CGI. Needless to say, a CG rhino is incredibly expensive. I think the price tag then was about a million dollars. Soundtrack. Hans Zimmer and Lisa Gerard's score, called Gladiator, music from the motion picture, is one of the best-selling film soundtracks of all time. The album won the Golden Globe for Best Soundtrack and was also nominated for an Oscar and a BAFTA award in the same category. This is the second Oscar and fourth nomination for Scott Malone. Actor Oliver Reed died three weeks before the end of filming, but because he was playing a fairly important character, Maximus's elderly mentor, the film had insurance that allowed him to reshoot all of his scenes with another actor without having to pay more. However, Ridley Scott didn't want to write Reed out of the film, and the rest of the cast was too tired to reshoot. Instead, the script was rewritten to cut out his presence, and a body double and computer effects were used for his final scenes. Joaquin Phoenix improvised the Am I Not Merciful? Am I not merciful? Connie Nielsen, who was acting in the scene with him, wasn't expecting this, and her scare was real, not staged. Some of the actor's injuries, which are seen in the film, are real. General Maximus appears with facial injuries after the Battle of Germania at the beginning of the film. What kind of makeup did they use? Simply none. Crow injured his face while filming the scene with his horse. The animal reared abruptly, and some branches hit the actor's face. Despite this, Russell Crow formed a lasting friendship with the horse. When Emperor Marcus Aurelius, Richard Harris, says to Maximus, tell me about your home, he replies, Very simple place. Pink stones that warm in the sun. Um, kitchen garden that smells of herbs in the day. Jasmine in the evening. Through the gate is a giant poplar. This was all improvised by Russell Crowe, who was actually describing his own home in Australia, missing his home and his wife. Ridley Scott rejected the idea of suggesting a possible relationship or romance between Maximus and Lucilla, 
believing that this would lessen the impact of Maximus's need to reunite with his murdered wife and child. Throughout the intense gladiator combat scenes, Russell Crowe accumulated a number of injuries, including an injured Achilles tendon, a broken bone in his foot, a dislocated hip, some damaged bicep tendons, and a loss of feeling in his fingers for two years due to the hilt of his sword. The opening battle of the film was filmed in England's Bourne Woods. The area had been marked for deforestation, so Ridley Scott proposed that they burn the forest for the film, which was very convenient for the local authorities. The place was also used for films such as War Horse, Robin Hood, and Captain America. Russell Crowe has said that Gladiator is his favorite movie he's ever made, and Maximus, the best character he ever played. That was the simple idea. It's 184 AD or 180 AD. You're a Roman general and you're being directed by Ridley Scott. You know, so that drove my motivation a lot. You know, it was very difficult putting on those clothes and going, oh yeah, I can, off we go, I'm a Roman general. And I know that Joaquin Phoenix had the same problem because we talked about it, you know. In the film, Joaquin Phoenix's sadistic emperor Commodus gives the thumbs down sign when the gladiator is due to be executed. In fact, in the Roman Empire, the gesture worked the opposite way. The thumbs down signified dropping the sword and therefore mercy for the gladiator while the thumbs-up sign was a gesture that prompted action, that is, the death of the gladiator. In the film, it was done the other way around so as not to cause confusion. Game of Thrones actor Jack Gleason was inspired by the character of Commodus to play Joffrey Baratheon. Very amusing. Isn't it a funny song? Like modern athletes, gladiators often had sponsors and endorsed products in the arena. The film's producers considered including this, but ultimately scrapped it because it was too unbelievable. The script had many problems and several actors complained about their dialogue. Russell Crowe was very unhappy with the script and kept changing his lines to ones he thought were better, and if they wouldn't let him change them, he would walk off the set. He initially refused to say the famous line, He told screenwriter William Nicholson, Your lines are rubbish, but I'm the best actor in the world, and I can make even that rubbish sound good. He eventually gave that speech because he couldn't think of a better one. Years later, the screenwriter would admit, In Russell Crowe's defense, my lines were probably rubbish. Many of the most famous lines from the film and from Maximus were improvised by Crowe, and he was also the one who gave his character that name. He explained the situation as follows. Maybe when people say that I'm a volatile actor, it all comes from this experience in Gladiator. The situation was, for example, that we were going to film in Morocco with a technical team of 200 people and 100 actors, and I had no dialogue to learn. I didn't know what the scenes we were going to film were going to be about. I think we had an American scriptwriter working on the film, another English one, and of course a group of producers who tried to put their ideas in. And on top of that, there was Ridley Scott himself. Ridley would say to me, Look, this is the structure of what we're going to do now. What would you say in that situation? So I would make up my lines. And that's how the strength and honor line came about. That's how, at my mark, wrath and fire came about. The name Maximus Decimus Meridius just flowed well. The production found in Connie Nielsen an unexpected source of information about the historical period of the Roman Empire, which had always fascinated the actress. When they needed to adjust historical details, she was the first person they consulted. Hugh Jackman was considered for the role of Maximus before Russell Crowe. Jude Law was considered for the role of Commodus before Joaquin Phoenix. The Battle of Geonosis in Star Wars, Episode 2, Attack of the Clones is inspired by Gladiator. Kirk Douglas, the actor who played Spartacus in Kubrick's film, said that he had seen Gladiator and liked it, but that it was nowhere near as noble. 
In all historical films, there are always errors and mistakes. That this clothing is from the 15th century instead of the 14th, that this character was not here at this time. But there are some that are more obvious. In Gladiator, there are two that everyone always comments on. The presence of cowboys in the background in the forest scene. And the mythical gas cylinder that is seen under a chariot that overturns in the Colosseum. It also contains anachronisms, such as the appearance of padlocks, which were not created until 1920, some 1,750 years after the time in which Gladiator is set. Despite the excellent documentation work, a good historian could have saved the error in time. Another small mistake not solved in post-production is the presence of this camera and an assistant wearing jeans in this scene. as well as this bottle of water in the stands that an extra tries to hide. And the passage of this vehicle to the background of the scenery while Russell Crowe leaves the battle arena. Arguably, the worst gladiator mistake occurs when Maximus blinks when he's supposed to be dead. Near the end of the film, Maximus dies, and when he does, Lucilla reaches out and closes her unseeing eyes. The problem with this touching moment is that while it's happening, it is clear that Maximus blinks. And not only that, you can see his pulse, and a pillow under him in the next scene. Some of the worst mistakes that occur in Gladiator are when members of the crew or elements of the filmmaking appear. One such instance of this is during the very first Gladiator match when Maximus and Juba are bound together. After the last man is killed, the camera pans around the arena dramatically. Unfortunately though, the magic is ruined when the shadow of the camera can clearly be seen on Maximus's chest twice. What could have been a great shot is tainted by the appearance of the camera. Hand double, one of the most legendary scenes in the film and one of the most parodied is that of Russell Crowe, walking through the countryside in one of those dreamlike scenes in the film. Ridley Scott's camera stops on the character's hand, caressing the wheat. But it is not really Crowe's hand, but that of his double Stuart Clark. An anecdote that reminds us of a gag from Friends, where Joey hired a hand double to make commercials. And in the wheat is this man wading through this high corn to meet the, his wife and child down the slope, way down the hill. And so we followed him. As he was standing there, he was smoking in the corn. I said, stop smoking. It's 40 degrees. You kidding? As he walked out, he did this with his hand. I said, stop. So you always got to keep your eyes open for a shot. Get the steady cam. We followed the hand. That became the opening shot of the movie. So in a funny kind of way, it becomes a symbol, a metaphor for immortality going to heaven. They did not travel to Rome to look for the best location to film. Instead, they built the imposing architecture in Malta, a coliseum that measured almost 15 meters high before digital retouching. The coliseum set as built by us is a full-scale fragment of the original Colosseum, as close as we can reckon from research. Surrounded by the epic of the Roman Empire and impressive special effects, Ridley Scott's production had a budget to match, $100 million at the time. The results were very evident for the Hollywood world. It won five of the 12 nominations it received at the 2001 Oscars. It was for Best Actor, Russell Crowe, for the film, costumes, sound, and visual effects. And the Oscar goes to Janty Yates for Gladiator. And the Oscar goes to Gladiator. Douglas Wick, David Franzoni, and Peter Glisswick, the The Oscar goes to... 
Russell Crowe in Gladiator. To relive all these moments, check out our video breakdown of the movie and get ready for Gladiator 2. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment below with your suggestions for future behind-the-scenes facts. Until next time, 